Hey everybody, I'm Spencer Brinkerhoff III and I am once again recording this video live. So forgive me of any mistakes that can and will occur. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a flat drawing and make it more dynamic by visualizing it dimensionally, you know, 3D. Um, follow along with me as we draw, uh, once again, Captain Jinx Taggett from my new book, You Can Draw Comic Book Characters. Welcome to the Cordo Classroom. Uh, last time we drew uh, our Captain Jinx Taggett, the character was just a straight on, very simple pose. And that's the point. Drawing as simple is supposed to be as easy and as straightforward as possible. What we want to do now is take that same drawing, and now that we know the basic style, the height, the design of the character, we want to add some dimensionality and some action to it. So you don't have to have one of the drawing coins um, to, to do your drawings. You can just trace it on a quarter or any other circle. But um, one of the things that I think is a great advantage of these coins are the little lines that are around there. So I'm going to put that in there really quickly. And you can see that there are those marked lines all the way around the coin. Now when you put that down on your paper and you draw it flat and you mark those guides, you'll know where the eyes and the ears and everything lines up. Now what we want to do today is add another level of dimensionality. So I've got this styrofoam ball here. And I've got this prepped. I hope that this works just right. Ready? So I hope that this looks just like the coin did. You can see that there's a circle of the coin and then there are these lines that go all the way around it to mark off the center line both horizontally and vertically. Now, if I were to add a little bit of a turn to it, let me see if I can match that turn and then rotate it. See the way that the lines curve? They show that spherical shape by the curvature of the line. So if we go back to the beginning here, I try and get it all synced up and it's just a straight line. And then we turn it this way, maybe tilt it down and around. And we can see the way that those lines curve as we move the sphere around. That's what we're going to do today. The first drawing is kind of a phase one drawing where it's just flat and it's simple. And we're going to take and learn on that one, learn or add upon our learning and draw something that's a little bit more dimensional. So let's start off with our drawing coin. And we'll see here in the top, we're going to draw once again, Captain Jinx Taggett. And we're going to get our drawing coin in place here, ready to go. And our first step is to take that coin, put it at a little bit of an angle and then we'll hold it down in place. And we're going to trace all the way around the coin. Then before we move the coin, we're going to mark our guides, starting with the midways. So this is kind of our equator halfway across the middle. Then we're going to mark halfway right down the middle. And then just for references later, we're going to mark some of these other pieces all the way around. Now you'll remember from our last drawing that these middle lines here are where the ears go and then right in between them is going to be the eyes. That stays true even though our characters are now going to be at a different angle. Now do you see the way that the lines are curved? Let me grab that sphere again and bring this up. So there it is. It's, it's flat, straight lines. Let's see if I can mirror that. And it's down and down and then you can see the way that it's curved just in the same way. So instead of drawing that line straight across here like this, we're actually going to put a slight curve to it to give the spherical shape and the curvature of the face. We'll do it this way. We'll curve these ones too. And that will help us know where to draw eyes, where to draw ears and make it curve. Look at my lines, totally sloppy. I'm going to erase it a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to erase a lot more uh, as we get some more details put in there. So speaking of details, let's hit that next step. We're going to start here on the side and we're going to draw our simple shapes again. This is just like drawing the letter C, connecting those top two dots. And that will be uh, Jinx's ear. And then here in between these two lines, we're just going to draw a circle. Now you see on this circle that, is, that will be her left eye that's on the right. 
um, there's a lo another little line in there that gives the slight impression of a nose in there. So we'll start just by drawing the eye completely and then we'll put that little curve down in there to show that it's the, the eye is somewhat blocked by the curvature of the bridge of the nose. Details, right? We'll put the pupils in as she's looking down and to the side a little bit. And then I'll, uh, I'm will i going to go ahead and ink this drawing afterwards, so I'm not going to color in all of the shapes right now. Um, but we will add some eyelashes in here so that uh, we'll look a little bit better and a couple little eyebrows. So that's the first part. Our next step, we're gonna add some more details, put the mouth in there, but because we're making the jaw now, we need to carve out some of that forehead area, and this is where the real dimensionality starts. So I'm gonna start way up high at the top here where uh, that third dot is in my row on my right-hand side. Bring this straight down here, and then make the jaw kind of jut out. So I'm gonna take an overlap with this ear line down and around and then bring that up to create jawline. There it is. Oh, and the mouth. Don't forget the mouth. All right. Now remember, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to um, use some of my pens to, to ink it and get it all clean. So right now I'm just getting everything laid out and making sure that I know where the shapes go so that when I ink it, it'll be all completed. Now we're going to use our reference dots again and we're going to start up at the top on the left hand side and make a part in her hair. Now that she's got that cool little swoop there, um, before we do that, I'm just going to rough in the shape and then I'll come back in and add that detail. So I'm gonna start up here at that part and very lightly draw down and connect to that dot. And then see it's got that little swoosh in there. So I'll start back up here again and go further past my line, back up and then across. And that's how I can add that detail to it. For the other side, we'll go ahead and come down here past the ear and up. She's got a little bit of a sideburn there and our next step will be to complete that hair. Back up to the top, and we're gonna make a V shape to create that part in her hair. And what we wanna do on this one is to create a little bit more volume and dimensionality, is instead of connecting right down here with the circle from our coin, we're going to make a little cowlick there and then come back down and connect to the ear. And that gives her head and hair a little bit more volume. Now, just like I did on the bottom part of this hair, I'm going to put a rough shape in very lightly of where I want the hair to go. And then I've got a little volume and a curve going on there. I can add that in after the fact by making the swoops go in and around. And there's Jinx's hair. Now, in this next step, as I'm aligning my coin, you can also see that my uh, guidelines have disappeared. So I'm going to take just a minute here and I'm going to erase some of these interior lines that I know I'm not going to need. Again, very lightly because I'm going to need to see where that all goes. And now I'm not too worried about filling in all of those shapes and making it darker just yet because I want to do that with my pen. Now. With the last drawing of Jinx, I'm going to rotate my page a little bit. Um, we would draw the head as one full coin, and then we put the next coin right below it to draw the rest of her body. Well, in this drawing, because she's kind of hunched over and she's folded up a little bit, we're not going to see the full height of her body. So what I'm going to do is take the coin and bring it up into and overlapping the head a little bit. And then I'm just gonna mark those guidelines so that I can figure out roughly where her waistline is, are going to be and how long I need to make my lines come down to get her feet as well. So I'll start with the center lines and just put a dot on either side of my coin and then the three dots on the bottom. Now I'll move that out of the way and you can see that there's just that rough kind of shape there, right? Now. If I look at my next step, you can see that I've drawn the torso. Now, to give a couple of guidelines, I'm gonna go ahead and connect these lines together 
like this. And I know that this is where her feet are gonna go like this. And there's a curve that I wanna follow. So this curve kinda comes down and around like this and it connects in to here. And that's the rough kind of like shape that her back is making in that curve. Can you see the way that that curves? Now I'm gonna do is use this line as a guide to know where to make her, the bottom of her torso. And this comes in and around just like this. Kind of a, a bean shape there. With our next step, we're gonna continue on with that line of action and we're gonna make her legs come right down like this. We'll draw that first leg all the way in. And then to make her other leg, we're gonna, because it's all bent up and her knee is tucked in there and kind of like a Superman or, or a flying pose, we'll just make an oval shape and then use the line to help identify the shape of her leg. All right, all right. So our next step is to get those arms into place. And I always start with just making the circles. I just wanna get the circle there so that I know you know where the hands are going to end up so I'm going to take and I can see in my uh, reference above that uh, right near this dot where I, I did the uh, outline of the uh, of the coin I'm going to take and come just above here to create a circle on this side and that's going to connect up and under here and then it's going to overlap on our torso a little bit and then I'm going to come to the other side and draw a circle here for the hand and then connect in here as well. Now that we've got that in place, um, we can start to add some of our details. And uh, we remember that she has got the two lightning bolts that are on her torso. We're gonna put those into place. We're gonna make some couple little shapes here to identify where her hands are. Little thumb and finger there. And then these lightning bolts come down this way. Make sure I'm following the uh, directions properly. <laughs> Hands can be a little bit difficult. Don't worry about it if it's not perfect. Um, it's just a drawing. We're going to go ahead and start some of our erasing lines now. We'll get this one out of the way on her arm. Get some of these extra ones out of the way. And then we'll add the details to her um, arms and legs for her wrists. And then she's got her belt, which is three little circles. I don't know, is that other one gonna fit in there? We might fit it in, but it's not in the instructions, so we'll not put it in this time. We'll go one, and then these stripes like this, right? And then the same on this side with the stripes. Little tiny details. And the last thing we wanna do is uh, make those braids. And this helps to create that same um, line of action, right? So she's kind of got a curve this way. And then by making the braids kind of go a, a opposite direction, then what that does is it gives us a more dynamic feel. So we have one curve that's coming like this, and this other one will go in the opposite way. So here, and here, I'll put those rough lines in of where I'm going to put the braids. And then just like before, they're kind of an interlocking C design. Draw a C and a C and then up here and then up here. And that makes the braids work. And I drew that little line in place to just to give me a, uh, a path. So I can follow that out. All right, and then last is her power blast. So we're gonna take and make that work too. We'll go, I'm gonna rough out the shape first. So there's a big blast that's um, coming from her hand and it kind of comes around like this and then it'll come forward this way. It's the basic shape of it. And once I know what that shape is, I can come back in and add my jaggies to it to give the blast a more electronic 
or energy feeling. And then there's this interior blast as well. It'll be two-toned. All right, now with that in place, I think it's time to go ahead and grab the, uh, the number five uh, micron pen and we'll start to trace into uh, Captain Jinx. When you're making your characters, when you get comfortable with the, the poses, you can start to adapt them and make your own styles. Change up the hair, change up the ears, the eyes, maybe some pointy ears. And by doing that, you're inventing your own characters. And that's one of the things that is, uh, is going to happen in the book as well, is that you will learn the basics of how to draw these characters, and then we'll talk about how to adapt them and really make them into your own. The idea here is to find a way to look at maybe what you thought at one point was very difficult and then realize that just by drawing these simple shapes, you can actually start to draw more complex shapes. And as I'm seeing, I'm worried about following exactly. I'm just getting a feel for what works best with this drawing. And if this one doesn't work perfectly, I'll just make another one. So one of the other things about Captain Jinx Taggett is that she doesn't fully realize all of her powers yet. So as she's learning and exploring and trying to, to figure out what else she can do, we'll have to adapt her character. Maybe at some point she gets a different suit. She'll, uh, she'll need a redesign on that. Maybe she changes colors. Any number of things that we can do with her. Oh, look at that. So here I am inking. And I just realized that I did not put those other uh, lines in um, from my uh, from my pencils. So I'll I'll be sure and add those now for sure. So that it's all complete. Because I have to add the, the stripes in there for sure. How many lines are there? One, two, three. That'll do. And then I'll real lightly do some of these. Now, with this one, we've got the number five uh, micron pen that gives this initial line work. By using the, uh, the number eight micron pen, just a little bit thicker, um, I'll come around, especially around the jawline And that helps to separate that jawline and that head from the rest of the character. I like making sure that uh, it stands out like that so that it really kind of pops off the page. I think that as we continue on with these drawings, uh, we may do some, uh, some live drawings. We'll take some requests and we'll just invent some of our own characters, or maybe we'll draw some characters that, uh, that we like from some of our other favorite shows. Um, I did a quick sketch of uh, Doctor Who. I think that would be a fun one to do. Um, maybe we'll do one drawing of Marty McFly from uh, Back to the Future. And with that, I probably used to get a little bit more erasing in here. Oh, 
All right. There we have Captain Jinx tag it. And if we were to continue on, we can color Jinx a little bit. Um, let's start with the light colors. So I have my uh, Prismacolor pens and I've used them quite a bit. This color is called eggshell. I think it works good for a basic skin tone um, and I've used it quite a bit. You can see the tip is soaked up some of the black. So well and you can see just like that right off the bat it grabs some of that black ink off of the side and pulled it into the drawing. One of the uh, wonderful things about uh, drawing and using markers is that sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get. It's going to mess up or it's going to, you know, add some dimension that you weren't expecting. That's all right. I said that's all right. I sounded like a, like I was going to do a Bob Rice there. You know, little happy little trees, happy little accidents. Some nice golden hair here for Jinx. Now you can color in with whatever you have on hand. Uh, sometimes you just have to color with, uh, with just one color. Um, that's called monochromatic and you can just do shading with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and color in, let me go back to my instructions. I missed a line. Can you see right there on her arm? I was about to color in these two shapes here on the green and I can see that there's not uh, another outline side for the uh, the other line of her stripe. Ta-da! It's fine. Color in the green shapes. It'll make it easier to go around with the orange that way. And then one, two, and the toes, which are the boots. And then I'll go ahead and use the same green real lightly around here. Add a couple little extra blasts, like electricity flying out there. Then we'll take our orange. And this is a poppy red. Well, as we're uh, wrapping up here, I want to uh, say thank you again for uh, tuning in, uh, checking out some of the, this drawing time today. I uh, hope that you found it beneficial and that you're able to follow along. If you want to, uh, to actually draw along with me and uh, you wanted to share those drawings, go ahead and post them up online um, using the, uh, the hashtag that you can see underneath my drawing board here. It's hashtag drawing is simple. And, uh, and that way I'll get to see them and then uh, you can show off to everybody else as well. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, warm gray at 40% and I'm going to just come in here and do a little shading around here. Just to add some shadows in there. And then because she's flying, maybe we'll put a little shadow up down here so you can see how far off the ground she actually is. All right. Everyone, thank you very much for, uh, for joining me today for this uh, new episode of Drawing is Simple. I hope that you had fun drawing and uh, hope you don't mind if my drawing looks a little bit sloppy today. The idea is that it's just fun, it's quick and it's easy and uh, you can draw and uh, try it out. Thanks for watching today. You can purchase You Can Draw Comic Book Characters wherever books are sold and please 
Share your drawings on social media by tagging me at SpencerB3 and using the hashtags drawing is simple and Cordo Classroom.